Generalized method of moments, or GMM as it's commonly known, is a computationally convenient method for estimating the parameters of economic and statistical models. It was introduced into the econometrics literature by Lars Hansen in a paper published in Econometrica in 1982. And one of the key insights behind the method was the recognition that many economic models imply restrictions on the behavior of economic variables that take the form of so-called population moment conditions, and that these population moment conditions can form the basis for estimation of the parameters of the model. So what is a GMM estimation? Suppose I'm interested in estimating a, the true value of a set of parameters, and the information I have about them is that they satisfy a population moment condition. That is, that there's some function, which we'll call f, some function of the data and the parameters whose expectation is equal to zero when evaluated at the true parameter value. Then the GMM estimator, based on this information, is defined to be the value of the parameters that minimizes a function that we'll call Q. That's a quadratic form in the analogous sample moment, that is the sample average of F, and a matrix that's referred to in this context as a weighting matrix. And I'll mention a bit more about that later. So to understand what lies behind this definition, we need to split the discussion into two parts. First, suppose we have the same number of population moment conditions as parameters. In this case, the GMM estimator is just the value of the parameters that sets the sample moment equal to zero. Now suppose we've got more population moment conditions than parameters. In this case, there typically won't be a value of the parameters that sets the sample moment equal to zero. So instead, GMM will return as estimator the value of the parameters at which the sample moment is closest to being set equal to zero. Inherent in this explanation is the idea that that function Q that we were minimizing acts as a measure of how far the sample moment is from zero when evaluated at different parameters. And for this measure to make sense, that weighting matrix that we mentioned has to satisfy certain restrictions to make sure that, amongst other things, this measure is non-negative. Another important consideration for the method to work is that we must have at least as many moment conditions as parameters. So why has this method become so popular in uh, economics? Well, I think there are many reasons for this, but I'd like to mention just two here, which I believe are amongst the most important. The first is that the method can be applied in a wide variety of settings. No matter how complicated the population moment condition, the method works, at least subject to certain technical caveats that we can't explore here. This is, flexibility has meant that the method's been applied in very diverse areas in economics. A second reason for its popularity is that GMM provides a way of estimating the parameters of economic models based purely on the information deduced from those economic models. Now, this is in marked contrast to another leading estimator known as maximum likelihood, the implementation of which requires an assumption about the true probability distribution of the data. Now, this is unattractive because economic theory typically doesn't provide that kind of information. As a result, if I want to use maximum likelihood to estimate one of these models, I have to make some arbitrary additional ass assumption about the distribution of the data and purely for the implementation of the method. The risk I run in so doing is that if that additional assumption is incorrect, it has the potential to undermine all my subsequent inferences about the economic model. GMM, in contrast, provides me with a way of estimating those parameters without the need for those controversial distributional assumptions. I think it's fair to say that not only has GMM been widely applied in economics, but it's also had a fundamental impact on how econometricians think. For it's been recognized that many popular methods of estimation, such as least squares, instrumental variables, and even maximum likelihood, can be viewed as special cases of GMM. As a result, it's quite common these days to see econometricians adopt a GMM framework in their analysis of various aspects of statistical inference, because then the arguments derived automatically apply to many of the leading estimators of interest in econometrics. Manchester has a very large group of econometricians working in the economics department and uh, they specialize both in the statistical theory of the method and also in how the method's applied in various settings, particularly in macroeconomics and also in uh, microeconomics in areas of labor and sort of environmental economics. Uh, this method is also uh, applied in finance and there are a, lot, a number of people in the Manchester Business School who are, use the method to analyze financial data. As uh, GMM has become very popular in econometrics, it's started to spread out into the allied fields, and there's a, a growing interest in it in statistics and in uh, mathematics. And we find uh, also have a lot of contact with statisticians who are interested in the use of generalized method of moments and related statistical techniques.